All right, so let's start with the big story that we are tracking in Vyond at this hour. There have been several predictions that have been made about the possible future of Afghanistan after the exit by the Americans. Now, one of the scenarios that is almost on the verge of perhaps coming true while other nations are trying to deal with the Taliban situation diplomatically is this. That China, remember, has already taken some pretty solid steps in laying out its strategy. It has started working out on its big plans and now the Taliban has China to call as their new friend. So let's begin to understand this new friendship that's brewing between the Taliban and the Chinese. Now this, this is a picture that will tell you a lot of things about what could potentially play out between the Taliban and China. The Taliban delegation meeting with the Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi. Beijing has welcomed the political Taliban leader Mullah Brother and also his team of delegates. The Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi was seen standing and grinning alongside the Taliban leaders who were also wearing face masks. And not just that, Wang Yi also hosted the nine-member delegation team. They posed for a photo op before proceeding for the high-level talks. But this is, of course, the first ever visit by the Taliban to China. Now, China has been quietly attempting to secure its interests in the post-US Afghanistan. And this active engagement is being covered under the name of the Belt and Road Initiative. Now, China has been trying to engage with Kabul on the construction of the Peshawar Kabul motorway. But with America gone, talks are likely to expand to more than just economic expansion. Listen in to what China has had to say about this meeting. Afghan Taliban is Afghan. The Afghan Taliban is a crucial military and political force in Afghanistan and is hopeful that they can play an important role in the peace, reconciliation and reconstruction process in Afghanistan. It is hoped that the Afghan Taliban will prioritize the country's and the people's rights and interests, hold high the banner of peace talks, establish the goal of peace, establish a positive image and pursue an inclusive policy. The Afghan Taliban hopes for China's increased participation in the peace and reconciliation construction process in Afghanistan and can play an even bigger role in the country's future reconstruction and economic development. The Afghan Taliban will also create a favorable investment environment and put its own efforts towards this. Well, the Chinese leader also took the opportunity to demand something pretty personal from the Taliban. China has asked the terror group to sever all ties with East Turkestan's Islamic movement. Now, the East Turkestan movement has been constantly blamed by Beijing for attacks in far western Xinjiang province. Now, according to reports, the Chinese foreign minister has called the movement to be a bit of a threat to China and also further added that it is the responsibility of international community to fight against the East Turkestan Islamic movement. Now, in a clear expression of geopolitical goals, in Central Asia, China has expressed its support for Taliban's role in Afghanistan's future, the highly conspicuous show of friendliness had the appearance of a pretty diplomatic mission. Now, this meeting also comes at a time when the Taliban are craving legitimacy. The Taliban has increasingly been reaching out to countries in the region in the likely expectation of becoming a major player in controlling Afghanistan. All right, now to give us more insights in terms of what's exactly happening in Afghanistan, we are joined in by Vyond's Pakistan Bureau Chief, Anas Malik, who's joining us live from Kabul. Good morning to you, Anas. Bring us up to speed with what is unfolding there. And in fact, first talk to us about what the atmosphere is like in Afghanistan. You know, with the fact that the American troops will be out of Afghanistan by the 31st of August, what is the expectation within Afghanistan? Well, uh, good morning to you, Saleh, as well. Uh, there's a general sense of insecurity here within Afghanistan. In the past 24, it's been more about, about 24 hours since I've been here. And there's a general sense of in insecurity, but life in Kabul is going on. It is business as usual. Uh, the people here, they are resilient. They don't seem to give up. They are, uh, they are to resist an oppressive regime, an imposed regime. They have faith in their security so, uh, uh, forces. But uh, the fact that how 
uh, the the uh, political leadership has let them down. That is what. Uh, that is why uh, uh, there is general tensions and there is general disappointment within the people of Afghanistan. At least in the past 24 hours, that is what I've observed. I'm standing at Shahrino, which is the city center of Kabul. They, uh, you can see behind me there is traffic that is ongoing as usual. There is a business as usual. This is the city center of Kabul uh, by and large, and uh, this is, uh, it won't be wrong to say you get, you get all the things, or be that be the dry fruits, be that be vegetables, be that be anything that is required, you get it from Sherino itself. As I said, there is, there is a general sense of insecurity, there is tensions. I've seen increased uh, deployment of police, the police right. personnel would be coming to you, asking you about your motives to stand on uh, uh, on the side of the road as well. That is something that I have not previously witnessed. But uh, the people of Afghanistan, they would want to resist an oppressive regime. They are all up for resisting an oppressive regime. And they say that they have full faith in their security forces to ensure uh, the pushback of those of those militant elements, those who try to take over by force. Yes, Ali. You know, at this point of time, Anas, uh, in, in terms of the reports that are coming out of Afghanistan, there's a lot of talk that the Taliban offensives have been very successful, where they've been able to take on a lot of territory. Now, you are in Kabul, and, and you've, of course, been talking to some of the locals there. What do the locals feel about the possibility of Taliban, you know, actually playing an important role in some kind of a political sort of a dispensation that will go on to rule in Kabul? They're not very hopeful. The locals here in Kabul are not very hopeful of, ta of Taliban playing a positive role as and when they're given a, po a, 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 a power sharing formula or a share in the power within Afghanistan. This is what the locals say, believe because they say that the gains that uh, uh, the Allied forces have made in terms of making a, rep, uh, a relatively progressive regime in terms of women's rights, in terms of uh, 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 in terms of more openness of a society, because they, you would see cafes running, you would see uh, 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 you would see uh, cinemas uh, 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 functional even in Kabul right now. Uh, the people fear that in case if the Taliban take over or in case if the Taliban are given uh, a power sharing formula. Uh, then th that those gains would be the ones who uh, would be having a major hit. In fact, uh, uh, there are reports that women journalists have already started leaving their jobs for the fear that the Taliban won't, won't let them work. That is the reason. So these are those ingrown, uh, genuine fears that the people would have to battle, and especially with regards to women, with regards to uh, uh, with regards to young activists, with regards to the younger generation, because they believe that in case if the Taliban take over, and in case if there is no agreed power sharing formula, then what happens to their careers? What happens to the international legitimacy? What are their future career prospects? Uh, prospects. So that is something that is a cause of concern, and by and large. Uh, as I said, the people of Afghanistan, the people at least here in Kabul, with increased security presence, they have full faith in their security forces, right. but they believe that they've been let down by their political leadership. Yes, Ali. All right, interesting. And my last question to you, Anas, you know, a lot of analysts are talking about, you know, what could happen in Afghanistan after the 31st of August. Now, we saw that picture, which, which tells a lot about the Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi meeting with the Taliban delegation at this point of time. Does it appear to be advantage China with the exit of the Americans? Well, uh, it's not just advantage China, it's all uh, to the advantage of the regional countries because remember China is one of the countries that shares the porous borders with Afghanistan. So does Pakistan as well, so does Uzbekistan and Tajikistan. The problem here lies is, is, the, re or is the role of the regional countries. After 31st of August, when the U.S. forces withdraw, and then subsequently, 10 days later, by the, in the next 10 days, rather, uh, NATO forces also withdraw. That is when the, the, the tricking time bomb would start, because it would be a battle of nerves, whether or not these talks that are taking ongoing in Doha, would they be, would they bond some fruit? Would there be some headway in that? That is to be seen, because as I said, the people here, they, they say that they would want to resist an oppressive regime, but Taliban remain a reality. Taliban, uh, as we've been seeing in their videos that they have been releasing, they want to show or they, get, they want to give this semblance of the, of the fact that they are a more refined or a change uh, or, or a change group. Uh, that is something that is to be noted. However, their inactions or their uh, their older actions are ongoing. And as late as just yesterday, you know, day before yesterday, that uh, 
they had uh, uh, captured uh, uh, an Afghan um, comedian and later murdered him. Those are these right. are those actions with regards to violations of human rights that are a cause of concern, and they would continue to remain a cause of concern for regional powers, not just the regional powers, for international community, and the people who would continue to suffer would be the people of Afghanistan with that. Yes, Ali. Absolutely, indeed. Thank you very much, indeed, Anas, for joining us from Kabul and getting us all those updates. And do stay safe then. Beyond is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.